Shalom, brothers and sisters. This week, I want to start off by reading in the book of Alma in the Universal Book of Mormon. I'm going to be reading Alma 23, 5 through 7a, 51, 5 through 7a. And it came to pass that those who were desirous that Pahoran should be dethroned from the judgment seat were called kingmen, for they were desirous that the law should be altered in a manner to overthrow the free government and to establish a king over the land. And those who were desirous that Pahoran should remain chief judge of the land took upon them the name of freemen. And thus was the division among them, for the freemen had sworn or covenanted to maintain their rights and the privileges of their religion by a free government. And it came to pass that this matter of their contention was settled by the voice of the people. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came in favor of the free men. Today in the United States is voting day, and... I don't want this message to be specifically for my fellow citizens here in the U.S. I'm hoping I can share a message that will be globally relevant. I am going to use some things that are happening here and what is discussed in that passage in the Book of Mormon I just read to convey what I want to be a message of hope. I want to start off by sharing a very quick story. There was a group of people at one point, they believed that the end of the world was upon them. And so they gathered together, they started studying scriptures, they began doing specific rituals that were unique to their branch of their faith. And then finally the day came and people from the government showed up. There was a standoff and then there was a huge battle and the people they died. They were killed. If this story sounds rather vague, that is both to keep the story short and also because these are the things that the Essenes, those that scholars believe most likely wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the Branch Davidians in Waco, Texas have in common. Thousands of years apart. At least at least 2,000 years apart, Right? And yet the story is the same. It's a story of broken hope and faith that was not fulfilled. They believed that the end of the world was upon them and they were, they were right because it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. They created a situation on both sides. I'm not saying that the Roman government or the U.S. government was in the right here. But they basically both created what we today would term as a doomsday cult. They wanted to see this final battle unfold. And sadly, for them, it was a final battle. And I think that that is unfortunately very relevant to us today. Now, I want to share another story, and this one's very personal. I I may have shared it before. Um, I, I'm fairly positive I've not written it down, but this is a story that I like to share to help people understand the burden of prophecy and revelation. In 1992, in the spring of 92, I was graduating high school. I was trying to figure out what to do with my life. I was planning on going on a mission. I was thinking about perhaps going to college, but I had my whole life ahead of me. And I was in school. I was in a, a particular class. And we had a moment where I wasn't doing anything, so I decided to pray. Now, obviously, it was not a prayer out loud. I did not get down on my knees, but I sat there, I closed my eyes, and I prayed. And I asked the Lord to help me to know what to do. And the Lord gave me there in my public school classroom a vision. I was told that with a man whose last name was Bush being president, and at that time, uh, the first Bush, Ronald Reagan's vice president, was running for re-election. When a man named Bush was in office, the United States would be attacked. I saw skyscrapers in New York falling. 
I saw the Pentagon burning. I saw damage everywhere. A plane with its passengers dead. Now, at the time, I couldn't tell you exactly what it meant. I thought it was a vision of World War III. The Lord told me that America was going to be attacked and that we would be involved in wars for decades afterwards. When Bush did not win the election, I thought the vision would not come to pass. We had Bill Clinton for president for eight years and then another Bush ran for president and he won. And I thought, I wonder if that vision I had is going to come true. I wonder if this is going to be the end of the world. It did come true. You probably recognize what I share with you as 9-11. But it didn't come true in the dramatic Hollywood version that I imagined it. Yes, the Twin Towers fell. Many, many people died. The Pentagon was hit and it did burn. And there was a plane that the heroic passengers took over and crashed so that the terrorists could not use that, could not use their plane as a weapon. And then we were in wars for decades. But it wasn't the end. Why am I sharing this with you now? I shared with you previously a message of hope about how Zion needs to be built and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. And brothers and sisters, that has not happened yet. And so I'm not worried about the gloom and doom cult, if you will. This idea that no matter who wins, everything's going to be bad. I am working on plan B. What happens when everything doesn't go to hell? And I'd like to encourage you to work on that with me. We need to spread hope because the only thing the adversary is sharing right now is fear. The adversary is telling us to fear our neighbors, our loved ones, because both sides are pushing fear of the other side. They are pretending that their politics and their policies are the only hope for God's people. And I want to testify to you that Jesus Christ is our hope. He is our salvation. And at the end of the day, it does matter who wins in some perspectives. But no matter who wins, we belong to God. We are his people and he will take care of us. And brothers and sisters, how is he going to take care of us? Because he's called upon us to take care of one another. People complain about times of change. Times have been changing forever. The Revolutionary War of the United States. Times changed. The War of 1812. Times changed. The Civil War. Times changed. The Great War, we now call it World War I, times changed. After World War II, times changed. After the Cold War, times changed. After the Gulf Wars, times change. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to testify to you right now that no matter who wins, times are going to change. Change is the only constant. The change I want to see is hope in Christ and building Zion together as the Lord's people. And brothers and sisters, I know we can do it. I also know that if we do it out of fear, we will fail. I know that if we do it to try to escape this world, like Nimrod did, to try to build some sort of a tower to heaven, we will fail. But I know that if we put our faith in Jesus Christ, and we work to bring hope to this world, to be God's people of peace, to be his prophetic people, Times can only change for the better because we will bring the light of Christ into this world. We will transform it. There will be no more us and them. 
we will be one creation and we as one creation will be one with the creator. Will there be people that reject hope? Of course, there always will be. And what will we do to stop them? We'll love them where they are. They can try to stop us, but if we have God on our side, they can't. And if we focus our efforts on trying to stop them, then we're not focusing on building Zion and doing the Lord's work. So what is my message for you this U.S. Election Day? God is with us. And if God is with us, who can stand against us? That is my message. If you would like to hear more messages of hope, peace, love, and unity, please subscribe to this channel. If this message has helped you in any way, please like and share. If you live in the United States, please get out and vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Vote for whoever is your conscience. I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for in this video because it's none of your business and it doesn't matter. Vote for the person that you feel represents you. Vote for the person that you believe will bring hope and change. And then don't sit back and wait for that person if your person wins. And don't sit back and complain if your person doesn't. Go out and be that hope and change. If this message has helped you in any way, please like and share it. And if you'd like to learn more about the Fellowship of Christ, feel free to visit our website, cjccf.org. And if you want to get in contact with us, info at cjccf.org. For now, shalom and God bless.